What up, y'all? It's 360 with Speedy Mormon. I'm him, and we have a very special guest in the building, Long Beach's very own Vince Staples is here. How you feeling? Vince, what's up, man? How are you? I'm good, man. Can't complain, can't complain. I'm happy to see you not only because we're here uh, doing this interview, but we're also in California. California is also home to Ramona Park, and the name of the next album is Ramona Park Broke My Heart. What does that mean, Ramona Park Broke My Heart, and what is the significance of that park to you and your story? Uh, the name is kind of more so um, metaphorical than is anything else. Um, you try to find connectivity points with your audience when you make things, and it kind of gives them a point of reference. You know, everybody has a home, so that being my home is where that reference point comes from, and the latter comes from, I guess, more so parable for growth. You know, you think about what happens as time goes by and you learn and trials and tribulations and overcoming certain things and having realizations that come with, you know, learning about the things that you care about. And I guess that is where the title comes from. It just sounds cool, but <laughs> it also has a um, kind of is more of a signifier for what the subject matter is on the project. You know, um, life is pretty similar for a lot of people. Just growing up in the area, you sharing experiences, you know, walking to and from, walking to school, passing it every day. It didn't really mean much to me when I was young. To be honest, it was just a park. Yeah. But as you get older, you know, you realize symbolism. And the symbolism of that is something that I draw to because it's a focal point in the community, as a lot of them are in Southern California, Los Angeles County, Long Beach specifically. So it's, it's kind of more of a focal point. It's not really about spending a lot of time. You know, I didn't even spend a lot of time in the park. I spent a lot of time around the corner, but it's the focal point. So, you know, we think about music and creativity and the things that you draw your reference points from. You know, you need a focal point. You need, you know, an antagonist or protagonist. You need a scenery. So I guess that's just where that comes from. Yeah. You were just telling Rosenberg that you don't consider yourself to be the music guy and that you're still looking for other creative mediums kind of to express yourself. Why don't you see yourself as the music guy? I mean, if I knew the answer to that, then I could probably, you know, consider myself as such, but it's just not what I look at. You know, I don't, I don't have a lot of aspirations. Like, I don't have any accolades. Music is just a means of creativity, you know what I mean? So I don't, I don't limit myself to just that. You know, I didn't, I didn't grow up wanting to be a musician or anything like that. But I appreciate music, of course, and it's, it's afforded me a lot of space to figure things out, you know, a canvas to kind of figure stuff out, but I'm not, when you see the people who, you know, live and breathe music, and, you know, I got a lot of friends that, you know, wake up and go to sleep and thinking about music. Right. And I'm just not that person, so I can't say that I am if I'm not, especially when I know people that, you know, really live and breathe it, and that's not, that's yeah. not my day to day. So then, what are those things that you're, you know, going to sleep, waking up, thinking about, you know, living and breathing? I haven't figured that out yet. I'm, I'm really just not that type of person. You know, I'm kind of all over the place, but I'm not. I'm just not that kind of person. Okay, yeah. that's fair enough. Right now you're on tour with Tyler the Creator and Kelly Uchis. There's an inherent self-awareness that comes with being an opener uh, on a tour and you've been vocal about you know, what it is that your role is on the show and you embrace it, you enjoy it. I actually caught the show at the Staples or the Crypto Arena now, but what is it like for you being able to open a show? Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, as a business at the end of the day, you kind of got to know where you stand and what your job is and do it, you know. Um, Going on tour with Cali and Tyler, um, Tizo touchdown as well. Um, it, it's a good experience, you know. A lot of big arenas, a lot of big, a lot of big cities, and just have an opportunity, you know. Like I said, to try to grow your fan base and try to get, I guess, take steps towards, you know, being further accomplished is always, you know, a thing that you have to be grateful for. But yeah, man, open it up. You know, it's not about you. You know, you got to sit, get in there, and try to warm up the crowd for, you know, lack of better words and just know it's a sweet spot when it comes to opening, you know what I yeah. mean? Can't do too much, can't do too little. So, you know, after doing it a couple of times, you figure it out. But you don't feel like in that 40, 45 minutes, it, it is about you? Well, it's not. You can say that, but it's not. Why though? Because you get paid to open up the show and it says Tyler the Creator. If you go to a, 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 a booker and say, hey, I'm trying to advance a tour for me to open up, they're gonna look at you like you're crazy. It's not, it's right. about Tyler. To call me if you get lost tour because the album came out and it's a direct support act. So you're supposed to be there to right. support the main act. You know, in music, it's a lot of ego and people want to feel like they're the biggest and best stuff and things of that nature. That's just not, it's not reality, so. That's what I was just about to ask you. So it seems like, you know, I, and I, again, I sit down with a bunch of rappers and there's like this, very common bravado that a lot of rappers have and self-awareness is few and far between in hip-hop and it seems like you're just like 
a very self-aware and humble person to know, or what, at least what you feel is your place in this game. And well, how were you able to like kind of find that mentally? Well, because it's not a game. Like, what's the game? You know, you basketball, you dribble, you shoot, you score, you win. The expression, you know, the music game. But is but why why is that an expression? So what should the expression? The reason be? it's an expression because somebody has to lose. So that way, when it ends up and then you do it and it takes everything from you, then you just lost the game. Mm. But that's not what it's supposed to be. This is a business. You're supposed to have good business, good morals. They pay you. And you know, oh, well, this is an opportunity, so you don't deserve ownership of your project. This is an opportunity. You don't deserve this, you don't deserve that. So we end up being able, you know, they don't call any other genre the game. They call the rap game the rap game because there's a bunch of niggas running around and they don't want to give black people shit. So that's mm. just the reason. I never thought about that. We don't call it like the country game or no, no, it does, it doesn't the rock exist. game. It doesn't exist. So at that, you know, I look at it like this, this is a business and it is a job, you know what I mean? You look at Coca-Cola and all the things that they own and you know you look at the pepsi corporate on things that they own you know the job of xyz isn't to knock off pepsi isn't to knock off coke it's to do things in tandem to help grow the brand right. so as an opener on a show it's your job to do something in tandem with tyler with sure. cali which are the bigger names on the brand they help grow that that way you can get into these venues where you're playing for 20 30 000 people and then you can hopefully go to a stadium that's done with knowing everybody's obligations. Mm -hmm. Because if you have four opening sets and the show is, you know, a, a headline, excuse me, four headlining sets and that's four hour and a half sets and nobody wants that. So yeah. you just gotta know how you sit and where it all goes. You know, it's, it's, it's a certain professionalism that should come with this. I've heard you've been in the gym. You said you've been in the gym for the last couple of years, just well, getting not in. Not lately, we've been on this tour a while. So. so the gym? Yeah, the tour is a disgusting place. <laughs> it's all uh, Raising Cane's. Chick-fil-A, I'm sick of Chick-fil-A, hot Chick-fil-A. If y'all got any opportunities, we're here. But um, yeah, man, tour is, tour is disgusting. Have you just been reversing all of the progress that you made over the course of the last two years? Yeah, probably, but you know, I'll go back later. The gym is not, it's just, you know, something to do to pass the time, you know? Yeah. That's the way I look at it. We was on lockdown for a little bit, so. And what is Vince Staples like in the gym? Are you throwing the plates around? Are you like a... Nah, that's for people. That's like some low self-esteem shit. I'm just like, I'm doing what I'm doing, man. And I get up out of there. I put everything back. You know what I mean? I wipe the stuff down. You know what I mean? That was my next question. So like, I think there is a, a certain code of conduct that needs to take place in the gym. What is Vince Staples rules that need to be implemented, you think? Like putting your weights back? For me or just for people? Well, for you. Yeah, man, it's like, don't be like nasty. Like, don't be nasty and freaky. Like, people be in the gym just being nasty and freaky. No steroids, you know what I mean? Don't, like, I don't know. It'd be a bunch of old dudes in my gym, too, because I kind of live in the middle of nowhere. So they be in there talking about, like, how they be getting their little money or whatever. So I be trying to pay a little bit of attention, you feel me? See how to Pick make up some game. Yeah, because you see them cars that's parked in front of that thing, you know, and you're going to be like, what do you do? Yeah. But yeah, man, I mean, just, you know. Respect people's space and you know people's property. That's just like regular life. And, and then, what rules do you think should be just in in gyms in general? Like the reason I'm asking because you know there's certain gyms you go to. You know, you, they, every gym I feel like has like the same characters. Like the guy with the gallon of water who has like that big belt, and mm -hmm. then there's also the girl who, or, or even the guy who works out who has the phone recording everything that they do. What is the Vince Stables experience? Well, see, at my gym, if you pull that phone out, you might get kicked out. Like, they take it, like, you know, you can't be really recording like that in the gym. Okay. So my thing is like, yeah, man, I ain't going to no Planet Fitness. Like, Planet Fitness, you might get shot in there. So, like, I stay at the nice little, you know, little cool when I go early in the morning or I go late when there ain't nobody in there. And, you know, so I don't really got to deal with that many people. But, yeah, man, I mean... They just, you know, people just get in their program, man. You got to let them do what they do. Uh, Vince, I'm wondering, how many Sprites have you drank? that have your face on the can? No. Zero? I've never even had one. Why not? That wasn't a moment of celebration, crack open the spray with your face on it? No. Why would it be? That's not for me, that's for the, if you happy about being on the Sprite can, you don't need to be on the Sprite can because your job is to sell and market a product. It's about the product, it's not about you. So, you know. We sure. Was, we were signing Sprite cans, we did a couple commercials, you know. We did some f philanthropic things. But it, it wasn't like a vanity thing. Like, he, Corey got a lot of the Sprite stuff, but I've never had any of it. None of it? No. I mean, obviously the job is to market and sell the product, but you know, that's a major accomplishment, or is it but not? how? It's soda, bro. <laughs> well, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're across the country, they're maybe across the world, you know? I don't like, I'm not into like vanity, bro. Like, I don't, I don't got no plaques. I don't got no awards. I don't, all that, my mama or Corey got everything. I don't have nothing, I don't have no merch. 
I don't have nothing. Well, then, if you're not in a vanity, you won't like where I'm going with this next one, but you've got a, a billboard in Times Square. Uh, Calvin Klein, you had a big campaign there. Oh, um, yeah. We missed it. I wasn't there when, um, when it happened, but yeah, that, uh, that was a really, really unique experience. Shout out Melina and everybody involved. That was a, a you know, good opportunity. So, you know, and they, she just, she just wanted me in it. So, you know, thank you to, for her for that. She always looked out for me from that to Queen of Slam and stuff like that. So, had you been in New York? at that time when the, the billboard was there, would you have gone to see it or would you not, not oh, care? Yeah, they would have yeah, they would have made me go look at it. But you, no interest? I like mean, on a person? No, nah, nah, I was there. You know what I mean? Like, I was there when it happened, like. <laughs> yeah, but you know, to see yourself, you know, that big and, you know, center of New York. You gotta understand, how, you gotta listen to how crazy that sound. I want to see me, me I want to see me big on the wall. That sounds crazy to me, bro. In the literal sense, yes, but it is like the. You seen American Psycho? Okay, but think about it this way, you know, all of the hard work that you put in in your life, kind of, you know, all of these moments that you've done kind of all contribute to these successes. Let right? me ask you a question, right? So if the, if the DP, if the grip, if the stylist, if the person that handed out the waters, if any of those people took a picture next to that billboard, would you look at them weird or would you be like, oh, this is a culmination of all your hard work? I would say that it's a culmination of all their hard work. Exactly. So what I'm saying is this. It's not just about me because I just stood there. They did a lot more hard work. They was there all day. I was there for like 15 minutes as far as for that specific picture. You know what I mean? So it's like I'm just not that kind of person. It was a bunch of other people in that billboard as well. You know what I mean? It's not just about me. I think it was a really good campaign. I think everybody, you know, who worked on it really did a good thing from the clothes to the uh, short film that she made to the photographs, it, it was a, you know, a good thing. But nah, it's not just like me, you know? My name ain't Calvin Klein, that's the that thing. I'm a smaller part of it, you know? That's fair. Okay, so under that same logic then, when and if you, know, you receive a major award of some sort, would you go and make the speech or do you not? I mean, yeah, you gotta say thank you, you know what I mean? But I'm not, I don't have any aspiration. I got a BET award, that was cool. That made my mom happy. BET Hip Hop Award, excuse me, yeah. But I'm not really like a trophy dude, bro. Like I had them in football in like the fourth grade, like, and I don't know what I did with them. So it's just never been my thing, you know, personally. No, I respect it. It's an interesting perspective. Do you think that's a, maybe a testament to kind of the society that we live in, that like people enjoy or get off to seeing themselves and seeing, you know? No, nah, I mean, when it comes to everybody likes, you know, just have their hard work um, recognized, um, but it's just by who, you know I mean? Is it a NAACP awards, an Oscar, is it a Grammy, is it a BET award, is it a VMA, all these other things. It's, it's, it's kind of the same thing, but you know, if my people is cool, if my people is happy, that mean more to me than those things, only because I just don't know those people. So I can't base my happiness off of things that I don't know. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I don't know these people, I don't know what their intentions are, I don't know their morals, their values, so I can't sit here and like have some people I don't know give me something, and I value that more than like, you know, say my family, the people that I came up with telling me that they proud of me every day, like that just kind of means more than... No, nah, that's real. You know what I mean? So is there something, maybe it's not an award or... Mm -hmm. or but what is something rather that, that does do it for you? That is like, okay, like that's I mean, something that... Having I, financial freedom and security and like in, in the knowledge that isn't afforded to people where I come from and being able to share that with the people around me that way, you know, our pitfalls don't happen again. That's mm -hmm. what I care about. That's my Grammy and shit. Yeah. Because you, you can add that trophy and then have to take it to the pawn shop because you got fucked off. So yeah. I don't really value that that much. So financial freedom and helping out the people from your community and the people close to yeah, you. Yeah, you know, you know if, if your homies say, hey, man, I'm hungry, you can't hand that nigga a Grammy. So <laughs> I don't think about it like that. And that's not any, any slight to them, but it's just that's the musical award of the highest prestige. But, you know, it, it only goes so far. Yeah. Well, you speak about financial freedom and financial independence. A quick Google search shows that uh, your net worth is $5 million. Listen, <laughs> listen, where do those answers come from? That's what I was going to ask you. So, like, you know, all the time I, I speak to people and they're, it, it seems to be never right. That um, shit is hilarious, bro. But it's a really good idea. It just shows, like, the vanity and, like, I don't know, that's crazy, but look, man, <laughs> that's cool. If we had $5 million, I would not be here right now. I promise you I would not be here right now. Where would you be? Not here. You would, I wouldn't give me, give me a place. No like. interviews, no press, no nothing, no hip hop. I go give me a Raisin Cane's, probably two of them. An in and out chill, make my money for me. I have like a, uh, like a Hyundai, Hyundai Genesis G70. 
GV70. That's what it's called, I think. Mm -hmm. That would be me. I don't even know that car model, but that's because you don't know. You you don't be at the gym. I be at bro with the people <laughs> with the real money. They got the Hyundai truck with the fridge in the middle. That's wow. The so the real people money don't even got the the Cullinan or the Wraith. Or they just got the Hyundai. There's probably a couple, but the ones I know that's really getting it. You know, the ones that live the over there by Kobe and them. They got that Hyundai Gen Genesis. Yeah. The Hyundai Genesis. The so one, I see the green one a lot. The or they got the Rivian uh, pickup truck. I see that one a lot now too. So one day, when and if you know Vince Staples does get that five mil, is it the Raising Canes and and you know these things and music is a, is a, is a goner? Or? That's all I'm saying, bro. I'll, I'll play music in my Raising Canes, and you can come to my Raising Canes and right before closing or every weekend we're gonna be playing unreleased Vince Staples music if you get a box combo. And then that's gonna drive people to the restaurant and then we're gonna be doubling up. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Get you a box combo, you get like a little piece of a verse. You know what I mean? It's gonna be a thing. Like you remember how back in the day McDonald's would do the Monopoly game? <clears throat> you gotta kinda collect the pieces and get the whole board. Maybe you could do something similar with verses, like a couple bars for with each combo. Now that's too much. And the Monopoly did that thing because they had the Monopoly play. Like I'm gonna need a sponsorship dollar if I'm gonna be giving my restaurant to other people, you know what I mean? McDonald's had a partnership with Disney. They had a part, then Disney flip-flopped the Burger King, but it's cool, we don't even need to talk about how they did that because I was kind of weak, but whatever. But they had that partnership with McDonald's, I mean, with Monopoly, and that's really where that came about. So if Hasbro want to throw me some dollars, we can make a game. If Hasbro want to throw me some dollars right now, we got ideas and opportunities. So, you know, a shout out to Hasbro, Mattel, all them people, like, they can call us. <laughs> Okay, for sure. Vince, uh, you know, I was watching your um, GQ video, you know, all the things you can't live without, and you went through your wallet, and what I noticed, you had a bunch of gift cards at oh, that yeah, time. Yeah, my system, people be giving me gift cards and stuff. Is a gift card a good gift? Yeah, I think so. Um, it's selfless, you know, it's like, I don't know. It's, 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 it's something about being honest and truthful, like we were talking about, like, it's lying, like you're omitting the truth by thinking that I want like some stupid shit. So give me a nice little gift card, you know what I mean? People know where I go, I live a simple life, so my sisters, my sisters really be looking out for me on the gift cards, like they come, they really come in handy. My lawyer and his wife be looking out on the gift cards too, they give me gift cards to like furniture stores and stuff. Okay, how, is this really like a frequent thing? Do you get gift cards often? Because you had like three on deck, just yeah, yeah, at yeah, that. Yeah. Them was old though. I never. I, it's funny. I used those after I seen that because I forgot those in my wallet. I don't think I got that right now. Though. See, that's the thing about gift cards that I feel like sometimes are a bad gift because half the time the store just get the bread because yeah. the people buy the gift card and the other people never use it. I mean, that's their fault though. Let them hustle. Like I'm. I don't like gifts, so like I feel you. You don't like gifts? Nah. How come? Because gifts aren't selfless. Like, if somebody give you a gift, right, they want you to like it because it's really about them. It's not about you. They want to feel. They want to feel like they did something right for you. If you if somebody gave you a gift and then you was like, all right, for sure, thanks. They're gonna be mad. So you might be the first person I ever heard that say they don't like gifts. Let's you ever say, seen a look at somebody's face when they give you a gift? They yes. waiting for you to get them reassurance that they did the right thing. I be selfish. doing that. I yeah, people that. selfish as hell, bro. Motherfucker gonna hang you some shit and stare in your eyes, bro. That shit is crazy. I would do. I'll be like, look, I got this for you, and I'd be excited because I like to give gifts. I, I yeah. like to give you, people you, you gifts. Are, you like to give gifts, right? I love oh, to give bro. gifts, but I love to give gifts to people who love to receive gifts because then they're happy and it makes me happy to see them happy. But it's still about you being happy. It's more so, uh, maybe, maybe it is. It's cool, bro. Don't worry about it. Like, it's cool. Don't worry about it. Last thing on this gift tip, just because I'm curious. Let's say in a hypothetical world, you know, I overhear you saying, you know, that you want something or mm -hmm. that you really like something. Mm -hmm. Is it still well? People only do that because they want somebody else to like acknowledge it and get it for them. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Because I've I've been in a situation where somebody be like, man, I just wish this was up because it would just make things easier. But they were just kind of saying that, like thinking aloud. Like, oh, why though? Why were they saying you it? You fell for that. You got it too, huh? It's cool, don't worry about it, bro. I but got you got swindled? it though, right? You I got, got swindled? It. You bought it though, right? <laughs> I did. Uh, it's cool, don't they, worry about they it. They got me? Yeah, they got you, it's cool. So like, let's say, so you don't even like to give gifts? I mean, look, no, but I do it. See, that's a pure gift, because it, it annoys me that you want some shit. But I'm gonna do it anyway, because it's not about me. You know what mm. I mean? Christmas and all that, I go crazy, bro. For others. I be getting gifts, I get niggas gifts all the time. I got this nigga Corey like a fucking, it was high as hell. Some Gucci shit that I wouldn't even want it, and it said New York on it. Hated it. Knew we would have loved it. Bought it. Thousands of dollars. My stomach hurt buying that shit. But so your ideal Christmas though. Corey, am I lying? I don't know if your stomach was hurt, but it's all good. 
<laughs> so your ideal Jean Christmas, shirt, like it was like some old like like you know you seen paid in full of course it was some shit like that like i'm from california bro we don't live like that so your ideal christmas though is giving gifts to others and opening no ideal christmas is being at home by myself and nobody call me just totally doing what watching maybe watching something listening to something look bro i don't know but just no christmas i don't want no tree i don't want no gifts because bro i got money i don't don't buy me nothing because you not i don't want it you know what i mean i would have got it if i wanted it like, what you gonna give me? Okay, is there nothing that you want that you don't yet have? If I, if I want it and I don't yet got it, that means I can't afford it, which means can't nobody else afford it, if, if I know them. So with that being said, you know, let's just keep this Christmas shit under wraps. I see you at Thanksgiving, Christmas is off day. But Thanksgiving, though, is a holiday you like? I don't really eat that shit, but like, I kick it, though. Is there any holiday that you fuck with? Uh, President's Day. <laughs> really? Yeah, President's Why Day. Why President's Day? Because them niggas got away with it. They was doing some shit. Mm. They got a day. What other day? Court, what day you like? <laughs> what holiday you like, Shay Shay? Halloween. Halloween is fire. You fuck with Halloween? I never had no Halloween costume, but like, I fuck with Halloween. But you not enough to participate. Uh, my mama wasn't with that. That's demonic in my Same. household. Yeah. Same. You ain't wearing no, no devil shit, nigga. <laughs> No, but How about if somebody dressed up as you for Halloween? That's weird. Not a that's fan. It's weird as fuck, bro. Has it ever happened? I, I hope not. I hope not. That scares me. There's so much other things you can do besides like a hip hop act, like Jason, Freddy, you know what I mean? Star Trek, Star Wars. Right. But me? Not Vince. That's weird, bro. Like, why? I don't. That's weird, bro. It is so. You could have been Slick Rick. It's so much better shit that you could be doing. You could be like me. NWA, you gonna be me. Like, you just, you just trying to get a retweet, man. I ain't even worth all that. LL Cool J, it's like, you could be really go crazy. But if they were just trying to get the retweet, did they earn it or? Nah, I'm, I'm muting you. <laughs> I'm gonna mute you. That's, that's weird, that's weird. Not even a like or no acknowledgement whatsoever. Bro, it's over. But, but come on, come on. <laughs> What's the weirdest thing that you've ever seen on your Vivint home security system? Nothing. Nothing. I live in a nice place. That's going on. You don't have a tap fire, into Fire, maybe. Like a fire. That's it. Like a wildfire. That's it? Yeah, ain't nothing happening. You never seen, like, maybe one of your homies is in one of the rooms, like, doing some you stupid shit. You think I let niggas come to my house? <laughs> I like you, bro. You funny. You a good dude. <laughs> no homies come to the crib. <laughs> Corey, you hear this nigga? <laughs> no friends come to the crib? <laughs> what? Nobody. No. Do they even know where you live? No. Who does know where you live? My mama. Only. And Corey. And Court. And no one else. So we're talking- And my sister. Four. Yeah. No more than five people know where you live. Why would they know where I live at? I am not Puff Daddy. We're not throwing no parties. Maybe to come by for the holidays. Holiday. Have a gift on. I just told no, you about the kidding. holidays. I, nah, we're not doing none of that. So nobody ever has been to your house before? I don't know. For what? What are we going to do? Spend some time. I don't want to spend no time with nobody. Cook, maybe? You think I'm cooking for niggas? You have a good heart. You be doing that? No, 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 no. Nah, you Not me. Nah, I you dad be don't that? be, no. You a good dude, I swear bro. I don't be doing that. No, but like, you know, maybe you have a, how about, how about a, a, a female friend? Maybe they come by the house? What happened when you don't talk to them no more? Then they got your address, and now it's four niggas in a Prius sitting in the alley. See, we lived a different life. I'm trying to let you know. I No, no. No, that address oh. don't change. I see you at the Nobu. Okay, so it's it's a the links are only elsewhere for not even just for female, just in general, like friends, family, anybody. Bro, look, man, look, bro. Niggas wasn't coming to my house when I was broke. I lived right on the corner, front unit. You can knock on my window. Hey, come to the hood. So you know what I'm gonna do now? I'm gonna go to the hood. What the fuck is you talking about? I'm not with all that, man. Ain't nobody coming to my house, bro. All right. So no, I'm assuming you live alone. My whole family live with me. Oh, your whole family is if together. Somebody come okay, to my see, house. Now that makes sense. If somebody come to my house and I'm not there, it's not gonna be safe for them. Okay. If see, I'm there, it's cool. If it's just my mama and my sister in there, you seen Die Hard? Yes. All right. <laughs> that makes more sense. You live with the whole family. Yeah, man. Now you don't want to. I, I come. No, if I when I live by myself, niggas can't come to my house. Still no. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. Nah, bro. How about if you 
No. Hey, come drop something off. No. Uber Eats. Bro, I got a car. So you go pick it up. Yes. All right. I respect it. I mean, maybe from a convenience fa- factor, I prefer it. Yeah, look, bro, convenience off. is not worth it. You ever, you, you ever been outside? I, I done got Uber Eats before. You ever kind of been outside when they pulled up? You ever looked in the, that car window? You seen how they living? <laughs> you want them to have your address? How are they living in them cars? Man, you got a lot to learn, my friend. You ain't never, you ain't never had an Uber Eats delivery and then there's four people in the car? Not even one time. You from California? Nah, I'm from New York. Oh, so y'all live better out there. Y'all got more common sense. Look, bro, you go, you get an Uber Eats out here from Danielle. It's going to be seven Jeremiah's in the car. Bro. <laughs> okay, it's different in New York. In New York, they might pull up on a bike. Yeah, I don't like that, though. But y'all don't have dumpsters, so, like, y'all living weird out there. Y'all moving different. Cause I get why Batman was running around, like, beating everybody's ass. Because we don't have dumpsters? That's weird, bro. Why? What's weird about that? What's weird about sitting your trash on the sidewalk? Yeah, then they come scoop it up. No, say that out loud. What's weird about sitting your trash on the sidewalk? I want you to say it. <laughs> How do they take garbage away here? Out of the receptacle. See, where I'm staying at out here, we still got to put the garbage out on the thing, but it's in the garbage can, like a, like a receptacle. Yeah, but it's not a big, it's just like a little joint. You throw it in, close it. Let me ask you a question, right? How long you been out here? About 11 days. How many rats you seen? Zero. In an 11-day period in New York City, <laughs> how many rats would you have seen? Be honest. 11. That's all I'm saying, bro. It's one big difference, and that's that receptacle. You got to close that lid, bro. You got that lid open. Is that your bad. biggest gripe with New York? Is the garbage on the sidewalk? Or what else is it about New York that maybe is different or weird to you? It's just really the garbage. New York is a beautiful place, man. I'm not mad at it, you know what I mean? But that's just... Y'all work too hard for that. Yeah. City that never sleeps. Ain't that what they call y'all? Yeah. Y'all don't got trash cans. No parking. It's crazy. Parking ain't all that here sometimes, depending on where you're Nah, that's because y'all don't be in the real places. Y'all be in Times Square. Oh, you say that Times Square? Yeah, yeah, y'all be like, it's weird. I I get it though, but like, mm, it's hella parking. Could you see yourself living anywhere but California? Nah, 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 nah. Nobody can if you're from here, really. Never. Where's you gonna go? New York? Go to San Francisco. Still California, though. Still. Never like a New York, East Coast, maybe. I know you're a big fan of Boston, perhaps. Boston. Now I would never live in Boston. How come? Why not Boston? Bobby Brown. <laughs> Bobby Brown is the reason why you wouldn't live in Boston? He's from Boston, right? But what? So? Bobby Brown. I don't, I'm not connecting. That's your problem. <laughs> Help Bob- me connect it. Bobby Brown. Bobby Brown is the reason why I've been stable. Nah, man. Did him wrong. Miami? Hey, Corey, would you live in Boston? Nah, New York. Miami? Nah, 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 nah. Chicago. It, it looked like well, Chicago. <laughs> Beautiful city. Have you seen the it's bean? It's cold. Why would I, like, what are you talking about? Have you seen the bean? What are you talking about, bro? You know the bean. What are you talking about? You wouldn't live out there in the cold after Khalid coming here? You want to live in Chicago? <laughs> no, but Chief Keith don't live in Chicago. Where does Chief Keith live? Out here. Exactly. So what I'm saying, bro. Point. All right. It's just too cold. I'm not with that. The are food there, is good, though. Maybe not to live, but are there cities throughout the tour mm-hmm. that you're like, oh, I'm excited to go to this place for 24 hours? Mm, I mean, yeah, it's cool. Tour is cool. A lot of cool people, interesting people, interesting, you know, environments. But after... What places on that tour list are you like, oh, yeah, this place. Love this place. When I'm, t- like, you want me to be completely honest? Yeah. I don't ever know what city we go on tour. tour. When it start, I know when it start and I know when to stop. I don't get too much into it. You don't even know where you're at. No. You just after, after we show, get off the bus, yeah. Get on the bus. Before I get on stage, I ask them where we at. Before you get on stage, I forget sometimes. But is it an intentional thing or? I just don't want to think about it. Tour takes him. Tour is three months. That's like jail. I'm not finna. Wow. So you don't even know where you're at until well, you, you get there five, six hours before you got to play. So it's like it's not like you're just sitting in the city for three or four days. Right. Like hanging out. Like you do the show and then you get off stage and then you go to the hotel or and wake up in the morning and drive 10 hours. Or you get off stage, take a shower and then drive for 10 hours. So it's like it's you're not really acclimated to a city. You know, you're not in the city for more than 48 hours ever. Yeah. 
and that's including off days. You know, off day is going to be in like a middle city because of overdrive fees. So you might end up in Topeka, Kansas before you go to Denver, Colorado. That's right. pretty much what touring is. Have you had a moment where you're out on stage and you forget the city that you're in? Yeah, all the time. I just don't say it if I forget. <laughs> Have you ever said the wrong city? Yeah, probably. No, it's it, on a piece of paper on the bottom of the stage. So you just won't mess it up, just in case. Yeah, but yeah, but sometimes I think I probably have a couple times. Probably mispronunciation. It's, I've done too many shows. It's, it's you know the variables on it is pretty high. Any city stick out um, in your mind of like cities that love Vince Staples that show you a little extra love? Hey man, and anybody that's in that crowd, I appreciate you know because it costs money, and you know we coming off a really really tough time. So anybody that comes to that show, you know I appreciate because you know a lot of people don't got it right now. So. I appreciate them, period. Like, it's not really a preference. Once you go through that door, however you enjoy your show is how you enjoy your show. You know they're here, the people are here, so you can't really get too caught up in looking for a specific kind of reaction. Yeah. You're on tour now. Uh, for those out there maybe watching who, you know, maybe are thinking about coming to a, a show and, and to catch you and Tyler and Kelly, and what, what, what would you say that experience is like and maybe why should they pull up? It's a really interesting tour, a lot of diverse um, acts. And, you know, Tyler's, you know, one of the best performers we done, like, ever had. So it's, I wouldn't miss it if I was into, you know, into hip-hop music and touring and things of that nature. I like live shows. Like, it's not really a better show than Tyler's show, so I would definitely pull up. Lastly, let's talk about the album. What do you want people to expect from this album? I'm hearing some good rumblings, but what do you want people to expect from it? I mean, you know, just listen to it and um, open ears and optimism, yeah. You know, if you enjoy it, thank you. If not, you know, thanks for listening. You know, it's music. It's all subjective. You get to take whatever you want from it. But, you know, we worked hard on it, and I really like it. I think it's, you know, one of my better um, showings. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm real happy with it. Word. All right, Vince, I appreciate you taking the time. No, it's all good, man. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you.